as church. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you and praise you for this day, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for your blessing upon your word as we continue here in Jeremiah, Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for this day and for this time. And we ask this and pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. So today we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 8, starting in verse 4. Moreover, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jerusalem in perpetual backsliding. They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own course, and the horse rushes into battle, as the horse rushes into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows her appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift and the um, swallow, observing the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Look. The false pen of the scribes certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So that wisdom do they have. So what wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their fields to those who will inherit them. Because from the least even to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. In the time of their punishment, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. I will surely consume them, says the Lord. No grape shall be on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaf shall fade, and the things I have given them shall pass away from them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to stop right there for today in our reading. We're sitting here as we continue here in our series of Jeremiah. We're seeing a lot of things that are going on here as we do in the New Testament times. We sit there and see how the people of the Old Testament and in the New Testament and even in today's times have turned to their own way. We sit there and see how they have raised up false teachers and um, people are flocking to them. And they're saying that the Lord is with them when, they are, when he is not with them. People are going around and continuing to be in habitual sin, and yet they do not repent, or nor do they even blush because they don't see anything wrong with the way they are behaving or acting or um, being a witness to others. They sit there and feel no shame for their disgraces that they have done. They feel as though they are right and everybody else is wrong. Their heart is definitely in the wrong place. As we have been told and we've been um, looking at Jeremiah, and this is one of the reasons why I chose the book of Jeremiah. A lot of books can align with our time today, but not like what we're looking at here in Jeremiah. It could be as though this book was written yesterday for the times in which we are now living. When we sit there and see how everybody is, um, no man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? We can sit there and see how everybody to, in today's age seems to point the finger and look what, well, they made me do it, or I'm this way because of what they did, or I'm this way because of how I was raised. Well, that is no excuse for a person's actions, or that is no excuse for a person's being. Perhaps we didn't have the greatest upbringing in life, or perhaps we didn't, weren't raised the way we think we should have been raised. But nonetheless, we know the difference between right, right and wrong. So why do we continue to choose wrong over right? And this is what the scriptures are dealing with here today and contending with, and even in today's, um, in, in the present age, 
where we can sit there and see this is how people are thinking. They point the finger and point the blame to someone else instead of taking responsibility for their actions. It is no, um, it is sin the way people act today. No one, just because it has been made law, does not make it right with the word of God. And sometimes people forget this. That just because man has made a law, and if it's in the scriptures it is called sin, it is still sin. Just because the world sits there and claims that it's okay to be this way or that way, but the Bible says it is sin, it's still sin. So why do we continue to live this way? When the scriptures tell us that, you know, in the end times, many will, um, the love of many will grow cold and many will fall away from the faith. We're seeing this today, and it's evident in the churches that in which we are now in. Once upon a time, these churches used to be filled. Every seat, some people even standing in the back. And now, when we, as we walk through our doors, we can have a, um, we choose where we want to sit. Even though we have like, we don't have assigned seating, everybody seems to have a place where they like to sit which is fine, but my point is this. We need to get back to the point where we are coming to hear the word of God and not what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. Sometimes people don't like to be told that they're wrong. Actually, no one likes to be told that they're wrong. But would you rather not want to be told that you're wrong, and especially if it will save you from hell? Or do you not care? I pray that you do care because there is going to come a time when you're going to be in a place that you're going to need to give an account. Whether you're a child of God, you'll stand before the Lord and you'll be judged according to the works that you have done for the Lord here on this earth. And whatever is said is what you'll be rewarded for. But then there's another judgment for those that have not put their faith and trust in Christ or they fell away and um, fell with, um, alongside these false believers and they went with these false teachers and did all these things, that um, you're going to have to give an account for every idle word that you've ever uttered out of your mouth. And then you will spend eternity in a place called hell. Hell is a real place. It's where you're separated from the Lord God Almighty for all eternity. Today we have the Holy Spirit who helps us and leads us and guides us and corrects us and teaches us in the ways that we are to go. There is no excuse for today because of what Christ has done on that cross over 2,000 years ago. He came that while we were yet sinners that he came and died for us. He paved the way. As we looked here a moment ago, nobody will turn around from their sins because they think they are right. The Lord made that possibility of a U-turn possible when he shed his blood on that cross at Calvary. Because of his love for us, the scriptures tell us that it pleased the Father that, it, that to bruise his son for our sake. We are his creation. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. Now we are to continue to live a life that's honoring and pleasing to him. Now, as we were reading here a moment ago, how, how so many people and false teachers want to twist the word of God to make it say what they want it to say. And sometimes it sounds good, it sounds logical, but is it truly the word of God? Just because a pastor or a preacher or a priest says it, doesn't make it always right. As we see here in Jeremiah and as we know of today, people like to twist the word of God to make it sound what they want it to say or to fit the, time, the um, times of the day where we know that that is not the word of God. That's why it is so important for us to diligently study the scriptures, to know the word of God, to know if somebody is truly um, speaking and preaching the word of God. We are to be like the Bereans. You've heard me say this before. When the apostle Paul was up there preaching and teaching, they took and listened to every single word that he preached and taught on, and they held it up against the word of God to see if he was telling the truth. And he was. But do we do that today? Are we holding each other accountable? Are we truly listening to the word of God? Are we listening to some person up there um, preaching what we want to hear? It would be nice if we could live however we wanted to live. 
But if that were the case, that there would have been no reason for Christ to come and die on that cross if we were allowed to do whatever we wanted to do. Because we know that there is right and there is wrong. And there is sin, and in there we are forgiven of our sins. And that's a gift in and of itself. But today we're going to be looking at what these people are going through and what we're going through and how the Holy Spirit helps us. The scriptures tell us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. But how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? By not listening to his promptings, by not listening to his teachings, by not listening, period. Now we know that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity of the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ was on this earth, he said, Be glad that I'm going unto the Father, for the Father is going to send the Helper, which is the Holy Spirit, is going to come and live and dwell within each and every single one of us to help us, lead us, guide us, correct us, and teach us. And even um, correcting sometimes is harsh sometimes, but be thankful that we are corrected because God corrects those he loves. We read in the scriptures in Old and New Testament, there comes a time when a person chooses to rebel against God so often that the Lord will choose to turn that person over to a debased mind because they choose not to accept the word of God. And that is a scary place to be because you will fall to death in your sins. You might be living a life here on earth good now, but remember this life is but a vapor. We're here today and gone tomorrow. I saw a beautiful illustration of this when the, um, Someone took their finger and they um, put it into the like, sand and they showed their finger with just a few little grains of sand on their finger. And they said, this is life. Then on the, the bottom picture was like of a desert. And they said, this is eternity. It's a beautiful illustration for the mind's eye to sit there and know that this is just temporary. That we are not here forever. We will die and we will have when we live here on this earth is going to choose where we spend eternity. I pray that we have chosen correctly, that we live for the Lord and for him alone, not for the likings of men. For men, there's that old saying, I'd rather stand with God and be judged by this world than to stand with the world and be judged by God. What can man do to us? He can just kill the body, yes but rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. So who would you rather be more fearful of, man or God? And I'm not meaning it to be in a horrifying way. I'm meaning it in a respectful way because we know that God the Father is a true and faithful, just God and judge. And when we stand before our Lord, we will all have to be, um, whether well, depending on what we choose here today, and don't be like so many people who sit there and say, well, when I'm on my deathbed, I'll, I'll accept Christ. Because more than likely, no, you won't. Most than likely, more than likely, you will choose, you will die the way you have lived, apart from God. There's only a select few. And that's even if you have the time to ask. How many times have we seen people, they just get into a car accident on their way to work or on their way home from work or crossing the streets, you know, a car runs a stop sign or a red light or something, they get hit and they're killed instantly. In that blink of an eye, in that split second, there is not enough time to ask the Lord for forgiveness, to repent of your sins, and to be a considered a child of God. But it does happen that fast. That's the kicker. The moment you sit here and say, Father, forgive me, it's done. You are, you have been forgiven. Everybody wants a new fresh start. Everybody sometimes wishes, oh, I wish I could just do things over again. For the believer, that is with Christ. Imagine our lives before we came to Christ. The sins that we were in, whether drinking or um, drugs or gambling or w whatever. Whatever sin, we always would wish, I wish we could start over. And then we just cried out to God one day. And he said, finally. And then he came and he cleansed, he cleaned us up. It wasn't by our own doing. It was only done through him. We're too weak to do it on our own. I don't care what anybody says. Sometimes there's just sin that we cannot pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We need God. And God doesn't want us to sit there and try to do it on our own. 
That's why he says, you come unto me as you are. You come to me with your trials and your tribulations and your hardships and whatever it is that you're dealing with. And I will take care of that. You come and rest. That's why you hear me quote those two verses so often. You know, when Jesus, the Lord says, you know, come unto me, all of ye who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the other is, um, you have questions, doubts, and concerns. Come, let's reason them out together. The Lord is willing. The, the Spirit is willing. But as we looked at before, with the Spirit and the flesh are constantly at battle with each other. The flesh wants what the flesh wants, and the Spirit wants what God wants. And we're always at battle with each other. But the Lord also tells us a couple other things. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And to be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. There is nothing that this world could ever do that could pluck us or take us away from the love of Christ. That's our own doing. That's our own decision that we make ourselves. Are we going to live a life that's honoring and pleasing unto the Lord? I pray our answer is yes. But if we choose not to, you might be living a nice, comfortable life here. But beloved, that's all it's going to get. You will spend an eternity in hell, separated from God for all eternity, in a lake of fire. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and tor being tormented never, forever, for all eternity. It seems like a no-brainer that we want to choose Christ over something like that, heaven over hell. But because of pride, and we choose not to. Because we feel that we have done something so horrible or so wrong that the Lord could never forgive us of it. If that were true, the Lord would never have had to die on that cross. He died for the sins of this world. There is nothing new under the sun. It might be advanced from technologies of you know years ago, like look at our cell phones. You know, our cell phones are these little things. When they first came out, they were bricks. We went from carrying pigeons to these little um, cell phones that everybody has now. It's the same technology though. So meaning is this, there's nothing that the Lord doesn't already know about. And when he died for the sins of this world, he meant he died for the sins of this world. So regardless of where you're at right now in your life, you can come and turn to him and he will accept you and forgive you of all your sins. And here's the beautiful part. Once we do turn to Christ and ask for forgiveness, the scriptures tell us he chooses to remember them no more. At times we will be reminded of our the past that we once lived. You know, something will, and that's just Satan trying to bring us down. But in those moments, just remember this. Look at it and flip it. Just to, as a reminder of saying, thank you, Lord, for sparing me from the person I once was to who I am now. And it's not being boastful or prideful because we're giving God the honor and glory. Because we're giving him the glory of saving us from who we once were. We were dead in our sins. We were not alive. And yet now we've accepted Jesus Christ, God's one and only begotten Son. And now we are alive in Christ forever and for all eternity. Let us continue in this new upcoming new year as we've already looked at a few new things. But it's just so important and vital to keep pounding this into people's heads to start reading your scriptures. It doesn't just even if it's just a few verses a day or a chapter a day or whatever a day or a paragraph. Our Bibles are sometimes broken like a chapter can be broken up into two or three parts. Just read a little part for that day. Read it two or three times a day. And as you're reading it, go over it in your mind. Think about it. Contemplate it. See how you can take that, what you've read from Scripture, and apply it to your life. And then in the same sense, we continue to grow and build our relationship with our Father in Heaven. And he, that's what He wants. He wants us to be our, a son and a daughter to Him. He wants us to come. Remember when your disciples, when all the children were running around on Jesus and the disciples were getting all upset with the kids, and Jesus is like, no, for such is the kingdom of heaven. It's being like a child. When we were children, we were so excited and happy to see our mom and dad come home from work or, you know, or see our families. And it's the same sense. Just like a little child, when we come unto the Father, 
It's like our, giving our dad a big hug when he gets home. He's always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So let us just be reminded of these simple truths. That no matter what we do, we can know that we can be forgiven if we truly repent of our sin. We know that nothing can take us from the Father's hand. Nothing that we have done can ever. The only thing that can happen is that if we choose not to accept Christ, he will honor your um, decision. He, will, he doesn't like it. The scriptures tells us he wishes for none to perish. That's why you'll hear me often sometimes say that in order to enter hell, you have to truly and literally crawl over Jesus to enter because he wishes for none to perish. But yet so many people want to choose to perish without Christ because they feel they can do it without him. Believe me, there is no one that escapes this earth without choosing or rejecting and I pray we choose rather than reject. Because again, on that day when we stand before the Lord, we will have to give an account. As we close out here in Jeremiah, let us just keep these simple truths in mind. And let us continue to stay focused on Christ our Lord and throughout and others throughout. Let's close in a word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we do want to just thank you again for this day. And Lord, I thank you that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And Lord, I pray as your sons and daughters, may we continue to live a life that's honoring and pleasing unto you. Lord, teach us, correct us, guide us in the ways in which you wish for us to go. And we ask this and pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.